بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا چینل ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دی کرانک گرینولومیٹس لینس وچ آر افیکٹنگ دی نوز اینڈ پیرانیزل سائنسز دیر آر ڈفرینٹ entities including in this group one by one we will try to cover all these which are under the heading of granulomatous diseases of the nose please subscribe like and share the channel so if we go for the classification of rhinitis it can be divided according to the etiology into infected group and a non infected and this non infected can be allergic and non allergic which we also call as vasomotor rhinitis which is actually is non allergic and non infective rhinitis as far as this infective rhinitis is concerned according to the duration of the symptomatology it can be divided into acute and chronic this acute again can be bacterial or viral according to the underlying pathology uh, etiological factors and these chronics can be specific and non specific non specifics can be atrophic rhinitis simple chronic rhinitis hypertrophic rhinitis rhinitis sicca rhinitis caesiosa and granulomatous rhinitis all these we will talk about one by one today we are focusing on this box which is granulomatous rhinitis so first is very basic question that after all what is granuloma the pathology people they will talk about in detail but very briefly the definition of a because all different diseases which we will talk about their basic histopathological feature will remain the same in addition to uh, some other cellular infiltrations will be there according to individual granulomas so coming back what is a granuloma granuloma is a focus of chronic inflammation consisting of a microscopic aggregation of macrophages that are transformed into epithelium like cells so this is aggregation of macrophages which are transformed into epithelium like cells and this is surrounded by a collar of mononuclear leukocytes principally the lymphocytes and occasionally plasma cells so this is the basic histopathological uh, presentation of a granuloma then it can be classified according to the underlying causative organisms so it can be a bacterial granuloma which includes rhinosecleroma syphilis tuberculosis very common ailment every one of you would have heard this word then lupus and then leprosy all these are under the bacterial granulomas means underlying etiological factor is bacteria in all these granulomas then it can be due to fungus different fungi can affect the nose and paranasal sinuses leading to chronic granulomatous inflammation of the nose which will include rhinosporidosis aspergillosis mucormycosis these three are very common in nose rest of the three that is candidiasis histoplasmosis and blastomycosis are relatively rare in case of nose and paranasal sinuses and here i just want to mention that there is uh usually a confusion among the students about rhinosporidosis and rhinosecleroma and this is a multiple choice question as well so rhinosecleroma is a bacterial granuloma while rhinosporidosis is under the fungal granulomas then there is another third group which uh, uh, is under the heading of unspecified cause that exact etiological factor is not known and it includes what we call as wagner's granulomatosis or peripheral t cell neoplasm which is also called as stewart's granuloma or non healing midline granuloma then is sarcoidosis 
and uh, another entity is what we call as jerk straws syndrome so we will uh, discuss all these one by one today we are talking about these bacterial granulomas and out of these we will focus on rhinoscleroma in today's uh, discussion so rhinoscleroma as i just uh, mentioned and in the classification also you saw that uh, this is a chronic granulomatous disease and uh, this is uh, under the heading of bacterial granulomas while the rhinosporiodosis i am again reiterating that is a fungal granuloma so this is rhinoscleroma uh, most commonly it is seen in northern part of the india disease starts in the nose and it can extends to the pharynx and uh, tracheobronchial tree as well and uh, it is caused by gram negative bacteria which is called as klebsiella rhinoscleromatis it is a bacterial granuloma so causative organism is definitely a bacteria which is a gram negative bacillus it is also known as frisch bacillus so klebsiella rhinoscleromatis or frisch bacillus is the causative organism causing the rhinoscleroma it has got uh, four stages some books have written three stages because this catarrhal stage is just like any other upper respiratory tract infection then there can be a trophic stage granulomatous stage which is also called as woody nose and this is the most common presentation of this rhinoscleroma and that's why uh, in layman term this rhinoscleroma sometimes it is also called as woody nose as we will see in the presentation as well then is the cicatricial stage so as far as the atrophic stage is concerned it is uh, characterized by foul smelling purulent nasal discharge and crusting while the granulomatous stage which is also called as woody nose there is a woody feel that is due to the granulomatous nodules which are being formed in the nasal mucosa subdermal infiltration of lower part of external nose and the upper lip giving a woody feel or a woody nose as far as the cicatricial stage is concerned there is stenosis of nares leading to the distortion of the lips adhesions in the nose and the pharynx on a ct scan you can see the involvement and it gives due to nodular formation under the mucous membrane it gives a woody feel so that's why it is called as a woody nose clinically this is how it can present this is another picture presenting with mass so this is what is woody nose so diagnosis is with biopsy and uh, there will be infiltration of the submucosa with the plasma cells lymphocytes and eosinophils and uh, at the start we saw that all these cells uh, these are included in the definition of granuloma so it means these are common cells which will be present in any of the granulomas then how we can confirm that yes this is not tuberculosis or this is not sarcoidosis but this is rhinoscleromatosis uh, then this will be due to the presence of but these two cells which are mycolic cells and russell bodies so in addition to these routine granulomatous cells which can be in any of the granuloma if there is presence of mycolic cells and russell bodies on the biopsy that is confirmatory uh, criteria for rhinoscleromatosis and this mycolic cells they are nothing but large foam cells with a central nucleus and a vacuolated cytoplasm which is containing the causative bacilli that is frisch bacilli can be cultured and russell bodies they are homogeneous eosinophilic inclusion bodies found in the plasma cells so causative organisms which are present there in the vacuolated cytoplasm of the mycolic cells it can be cultured from the biopsy material under the microscope mycolic cells and these russell bodies we can see like this 
So once diagnosis is confirmed, then we have to treat the case. Uh, and these bacteria, they are sensitive to streptomycin and tetracycline, uh, which is the recommended treatment regime for rhinoscleroma. Second course of this therapy is uh, repeated after one month, even during the acute or granulomatous stage. This will give a 60 to 70 percent of the cure rate. Then corticosteroids can also be used and in any such granulomatous diseases or malignant diseases, uh, surgical treatment is to remove the uh, devitalized or necrosed uh, tissues. And here in this case, because nose and pharynx can be involved, so we have to establish the airway and then correct the nasal deformity once the underlying disease is under control. So, uh, in this slide, you can say this is the nutshell or the summary of what we just talked about that uh, rhinoscleroma, which is a bacterial granuloma. It is caused by a gram negative bacillus, which is Klebsiella rhinoscleromatus or fresh bacillus. It can involve the skin and mucous membrane and can extend from the nose towards the pharynx. Stages, atrophic, hypertrophic, that is granulomatous stage we talked about, or woody, no feel is there, and fibrotic, that is cicatricial stage. There will be crusting, nasal obstruction, and it can lead to nasal deformity. Rumi nose with nodules, and uh, later on there can be stenosis. Biopsy will confirm the diagnosis, and on biopsy, in addition to routine, those plasma cells and uh, lymphocytes, mycolic cells and Russell body's presence will confirm the diagnosis and plus we can culture this positive organism from the biopsy material because this will be present there in the evacuated cytoplasm of the mycolic cells. So, fresh bacillus can be cultured from the biopsy material and treatment is that is streptomycin and uh, rimfapicin or tetracycline also and surgery is uh, for uh, canalization of the airway to restore the airway and uh, later on once the disease is under control then we can go for uh, repair of the uh, damage done by the disease that is plastic repair for example if it has caused a septal perforation we have to deal the septal perforation if there is a saddle nose deformity we have to go accordingly so there is always first day everybody's life so uh, with that we come to the end of discussion but don't forget to like share and subscribe the channel and uh, thank you very much for watching